Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. I believe we can go ahead with with uh, with our uh, session. Uh, welcome to the to the presentation of the latest version of automated system for relief consignments, ACIREC, and uh, facilitation of humanitarian aid flows. Um, in the next uh, hour, I will share with you. Um, the, the presentation that covers um, um, some information about the latest version of uh, our uh, ASIREC module and uh, the, the, the um, uh, benefits of implementing such a solution and an update on, um, on the piloting of this solution in, um, in, the, in the world. So I will share right now the presentation with you. So few words about the, the context, uh, even though uh, some of uh, the, the uh, you, you already uh, know um, uh, ASIREC, which was developed a um, um, couple of years ago, the very first version, um, following the, the, the cooperation, the MOU that we signed together with, with OCHA on the development and implementation of an IT solution for facilitation of clearance of um, uh, relief consignments in, uh, in member states. Mainly, initially, this was intended to be done in the SICUDA user countries. Currently, as SICUDA Customs Information System, it's being um, uh, implemented in more than 100 countries around the world. Uh, the very first prototype was presented um, yeah, back in 2016 during the Humanitarian Network Partnership Week. Um, since then, uh, we actively uh, worked with uh, other UN organizations and WCO on um, creating the, the uh, legislative framework, the international uh, framework for the implementation of, uh, of such a solution. Mainly uh, to avoid and or to prevent any confusion and to clear, uh, give uh, clear guidance to, 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 to customs administrations on the types of uh, simplifications and facilitations which are specific to the context. So the types of simplifications and facilitations which are applicable uh, during a natural disaster. And here we worked on the uh, recommendation 44 of the cross-border facilitation measures for disaster relief. We worked also on the recommendation 47 uh, UNC fact on the pandemic uh, crisis trade related uh, response, but also in a wider context, we worked on the, and we are uh, in fact working even now on the um, revision of the WCO revised Kyoto Convention specific Annex J5 as to provide uh, clear guidance on the simplifications and facilitations during natural disasters versus um, um, facilitations during um, um, pandemics versus different types of facilitations that are applicable uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, conflict uh, affected uh, areas and also how this can be uh, after that uh, used in general um, as um, uh, who, um, assisting member states in um, facilitating the clearance uh, for humanitarian relief uh, items. Uh, this was the, the, the initial uh, thought. So first to develop a component and after that to create the international framework and to try to work with the customs administrations as to uh, adapt the legislation, to draft the, the uh, SOPs and to enable the implementation and the use of this particular component. However, looking a little bit deeper into the, the uh, issues, uh, taking into consideration that in some particular cases, including in the case of uh, uh, natural disasters, 
we might have the, the um, customs information system, including a CIREC, uh, being uh, unavailable. Um, we developed uh, this year uh, a new version, the CIREC solution, uh, which can be delivered uh, software as a service as to ensure the business continuity in case of unavailability of natural customs uh, information system. So when the country is affected, um, the, the systems are down. So to provide an alternative, um, a temporary solution, uh, which can uh, last from a couple of uh, hours to days or weeks, uh, a system that can ensure the clearance of humanitarian relief uh, items while uh, the system, the national system, is uh, unavailable. Um, we followed uh, in uh, in uh, in the latest version of uh, of ASIREC the same, um, I would say, implementation phases uh, using how to use and how to customize ASIREC as to fulfill all the needs during the pre-emergency or preparatory stage during the emergency and also post-emergency. Uh, mainly looking how we can assist uh, uh, national disaster management authorities, um, customs uh, authorities and operators as to um, prepare some, uh, some activities as to facilitate in case of emergency, the clearance of goods. And here we are speaking about uh, working with customs administrations and NDMAs on establishing the list of uh, emergency relief items, including their uh, HS codes in setting up um, all the border uh, uh, procedures and the simplifications uh, applicable allowing organizations involved in relief operations to pre-register, so to register in advance uh, and to um, um, get all the simplifications, including uh, the duty reliefs in advance before an emergency can, uh, can be declared. While during the emergency to facilitate um, um, the, the, the recording of the um, emergency initiations, uh, the duration of the, the emergency, the government priority uh, relief items, including the quantities if applicable, and to associate automatically to activate the list of uh, pre-registered eligible organization. Um, facilitate also the um, pre-arrival processing of the customs declarations. The, so the pre-arrival lodgement of electronic customs declaration um, for all the consignments um, carrying humanitarian relief um, and to flag those as priority consignments as to enable customs to clear them with, uh, um, uh, to benefit from uh, um, uh, priority uh, clearance and to enable customs administrations to conduct risk analysis before the consignment arrives in the country to take a decision and to uh, release upon arrival directly um, from the border. But also uh, once uh, the, the, the um, um, emergency is terminated, to allow national disaster management authorities to record the end of the, the emergency procedure, to share that information with uh, all the relevant actors, and to enable customs administrations here to perform a post clearance audit and to assess the humanitarian uh, operator compliance uh, post emergency. Uh, as to facilitate after that, of course, um, the, the, um, the authorization of uh, respective uh, organizations involved in, uh, in this uh, uh, emergency for future um, uh, benefits. Um, as, uh, as an uh, overview picture of the actors that might use the, the, the ASIREC system for accelerating the import of humanitarian relief items, uh, you can see on the left-hand side, 
uh, we speak about the customs authorities, the National Disaster Management Authority, other cross-border regulatory agencies that might um, uh, want to, 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 to control uh, certain types of, uh, of items, such as uh, uh, medicines and medical devices, uh, um, uh, can be um, uh, telecom equipment and any other uh, relief items which require intervention or license or authorization from other uh, um, border agencies. Uh, we speak also about uh, giving access to the system to international organizations, to assisting states and of course to the private uh, sector. We have identified 10 main business processes for which we provide automation. Um, the first is the automation of self-registration process for humanitarian actors based on conditions which are set by uh, the, the, the government, by the national legislation there. Um, this authorization, um, um, once being self-registered the humanitarian actor in advance again before the the emergency is being declared um, um, registered uh, organizations can uh, apply for an authorization uh, here we proposed customs administration to issue an integrated authorization to combine all the simplifications and facilitations um, in relation with the relief consignments. So with one authorization to benefit from simplification and fast relief for exemption from uh, uh, import duty, but also to uh, benefit from temporary admission or other um, um, requirements which are imposed by customs authorities. We have also to um, ensure the, the cooperation and coordination of control between different border agencies. So to notify automatically all the authorities which are uh, involved in the clearance of the, the, the respective consignment uh, in advance before the, the consignment arrives and to get their feedback, their approval uh, before the consignment arrives. We speak also about the uh, facility to submit not a detailed declaration, but a simplified declaration uh, with minimum data, which would enable customs to uh, complete all the entry formalities and clearance formalities uh, and to enable pre-arrival processing. So this means uh, reviewing the declaration data and supporting documents, taking a decision, and having the, the, the consignment on green standby, awaiting um, arrival of consignment at the border with a view to release automatically upon arrival. Uh, so we speak about uh, providing also uh, all the assurances to customs administrations in terms of risk management and uh, coordination of controls uh, by all the agencies involved, but also giving um, um, them this, uh, this feedback from uh, all the authorities involved uh, at the border. From the humanitarian actors viewpoint, uh, we provide them with a uh, um, capability to monitor end-to-end, uh, -end, so to, uh, to, to see which consignments uh, have, uh, um, have re uh, received approval, from various uh, agencies at the border, reply to, to uh, request for providing additional information or documents, again, before the arrival as to not block the consignment upon arrival, but to uh, either release upon arrival, or if there is uh, the consignment is subject of control, to uh, allocate, to prepare and allocate uh, sufficient resources as to clear the goods uh, as soon as, uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. Also from the international organizations um, and the National Disaster Management Authority, the very important task is to be able to monitor exactly uh, which consignments are en route to the affected country, uh, which consignments already arrived and uh, they are um, uh, pending clearance and which consignments have uh, arrived, have been released, 
uh, including um, information about the requested quantity versus imported quantity and to, to highlight which are the, 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 the needs still uh, in terms of uh, relief items. Of course, for customs, uh, we provide them with capabilities for post-clearance audit. And here, the latest version of ACIREC brings um, um, new, uh, new capabilities. Um, but let's go first through the, some of the, the main processes, such as the, the integrated application for relief consignments. Um, we highly uh, recommend um, um, organizations involved uh, in uh, relief consignments to register in advance uh, as to uh, benefit from all the simplifications and give customs and other authorities all the, uh, the capabilities to uh, review um, uh, all the, the, the information being provided, review the mandatory supporting documents and get a preliminary approval from the respective uh, uh, organizations as the, 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 the conditions to benefit from relief from import duty or uh, to, to, to import certain categories of goods are clearly stated in advance. Uh, those informations can be, that, that, that information can be uh, reviewed by the competent authority in advance and there is no need to, to, to be done during the emergency when uh, we have uh, time constraints. So we provide the capability to customs administrations to define the simplifications that are applicable uh, within this context for relief consignments. Um, and also um, the capability for um, um, uh, organizations to apply for those simplifications for all or just for a part. Uh, to provide all the information that is needed, including the mandatory supporting documents, which can be provided uh, as scanned uh, documents attached to the application. Uh, in terms of uh, response phase, uh, we wanted to automate this process. And what you can see on the screen, it's a snapshot of the interface, the dashboard in which um, uh, customs authorities can set up um, the, the upper section in advance. So the types of uh, um, uh, customs declaration that are used either for uh, import for home use uh, or for temper admission. So you can see uh, for import for home use, we set up uh, this example for definitive imports using uh, a, a special additional uh, code C26, which is uh, taken from uh, EU legislation for um, uh, relief for goods imported for the benefit of disaster victims. And you can see on the right hand side, again from the EU legislation, just for the sake of example, uh, for temporary admission, uh, the code uh, that uh, enables the import in temporary admission of disaster relief uh, material. So we support customs administration in defining those types of uh, uh, special additional codes, which uh, can be used to clearly uh, distinguish between um, uh, standard declarations and declarations uh, related to uh, import or temporary admission of either goods imported for the benefit of disaster victims, so humanitarian relief, or uh, temporary admission of disaster relief material. In order to automate the processes and to, to, to um, uh, cope with the uh, sometimes limited uh, capabilities of control in terms of uh, staffing, uh, we enabled in the system um, um, timers and reminders. Uh, so customs administrations can set up the time delay for automatic validation of simplified declarations, summary declarations. This can be done in hours or minutes. So uh, upon arrival, if uh, 
the preliminary decision is release upon arrival or a documentary control. Um, the, the consignment can be either released automatically uh, upon arrival in case of green standby, or if it's just a documentary control, uh, if the customs authority doesn't have the, the, the capability to conduct the documentary control within a specified time limit, the consignment is being released automatically and the documentary control can be performed after uh, release. We have also um, uh, in the interface the capability to set up the, the time delay for the uh, submission of uh, uh, consolidated declarations because we uh, highly recommend countries to use simplified declaration, summary declaration during the emergency and uh, a consolidated declaration at the end of the emergency um, uh, only. Uh, we set up also a system of uh, uh, reminders, like uh, an expiry reminder for the submission of the consolidated declaration. So uh, as soon as in the system uh, it's uh, recorded the, the, the end of the, the emergency, we notify uh, all involved uh, organizations uh, that uh, um, a consolidated declaration has uh, has to be submitted within the, the timeframes prescribed by customs. And if that uh, declaration is not, uh, uh, is not submitted, a reminder is being sent to all the organizations. Now, this, uh, these settings are done uh, in advance uh, just to inform all the organizations about the procedures that are applicable in case of, uh, of um, uh, natural disasters. Uh, and other events um, based on, uh, uh, during the response phase, based on the list of pre-registered and pre-authorized operators, the system can associate automatically the list of authorized organizations, authorized operators with the respective uh, emergency. There is not an obligation to make imports, but it's just, uh, um, an automatic associations confirming that during the uh, this emergency, this list of operators are pre-authorized to uh, import um, uh, humanitarian relief items. And for those organizations, there is no need anymore to apply for an authorization. Again, the authorization is given in advance. It's not related with a particular uh, emergency. Um, uh, it's a generic authorization valid for uh, a period of time in line with the um, uh, le national legislation. During the, the, the response phase, we also associate automatically the list of um, 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 uh, relief commodities which are um, 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 requested uh, during this emergency providing also the capability to define, if needed, the requested quantity. So this can be easily associated when the, the emergency is being declared. Uh, automatically, the system will associate the list of operators pre-authorized and the list of uh, requested commodity list, allowing the authorities, of course, to define a, a, a requested quantity and also during the emergency to come back and update that quantity or update the list of commodity, uh, relief commodity uh, lists. Um, we worked a lot in providing uh, um, um, uh, accurate overview on the cross-border movement of emergency relief items. So uh, for each category of, uh, of actor being uh, humanitarian organizations or uh, NDMA or, um, or customs with a dashboard, uh, in which they can have an overview of all the uh, information flows depending on their role. Uh, there are some common parts which are for all the actors, like the notifications and tasks. Uh, what you can see on the screen is a snapshot of the uh, humanitarian actor dashboard. 
with notifications for um, uh, for uh, emergencies. So the, the pre-registered organizations are automatically notified via this interface and also via SMS and or uh, email when an emergency is being declared. They are notified also uh, when the authorization for, uh, for uh, simplifications has been uh, granted and also they are notified about the status of their simplified declarations. Uh, so when uh, um, the, the simplified declaration has been accepted by customs authority, if they requ uh, request additional information or documents, or when the uh, consignment has been uh, released. Um, all the operators, they have also a, a section in which they receive a different type of notification. Uh, it's a notification for which an intervention is being required by the, the operator. Uh, so a task has to be performed, such as when uh, uh, the goods have to be presented to customs or when additional information or documents uh, uh, are requested. Uh, this is the, 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 the main part that are, um, uh, um, is uh, um, provided to the, to the actors there. Uh, this is uh, a snapshot of the uh, recovery phase, so uh, how the National Disaster Management Authority is recording in the system the termination of international assistance. Um, you can see for each and every um, emergency, we have a validity valid from valid two. For those consignments which are already on route, uh, of course, the system allows them to be cleared um, even after the termination of uh, emergency, as long as the clearance process, the submission uh, pre-arrival um, uh, has been uh, initiated. And we provide also through the dashboard that I uh, mentioned before with an overview picture of the uh, quantities that have been already uh, provided by the respective organization and or by other organization to know which were the needs and if those needs have been already covered by uh, other uh, uh, importations. So this is just a snapshot from uh, how the National Disaster Management Authority is recording the termination. Once uh, the, the NDMA is recording the termination, an automatic notification is being sent to all the organizations pre-registered uh, as to announce the termination of the uh, in, um, international assistance. Uh, again, uh, as I was mentioning before, uh, this will end. Uh, so no new uh, simplified declaration will be accepted. However, still uh, the regular clearance process is available for the continuation of uh, uh, humanitarian assistance. Now, in terms of, uh, of um, uh, experience um, up until now, uh, just to, 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 to summarize also the needs that have been identified in the countries in which we uh, conducted um, um, uh, workshops. Um, ASIREC is automatically activated by the affected country's uh, request or the acceptance of international assistance. So this is done in the, uh, by the system and we put in place an automatic uh, notification of all pre-registered um, um, organizations. So this is also another reason for highly recommending organizations potentially is not a commitment for the organization to be involved in future emergency. However, uh, organizations potentially involved in humanitarian relief are highly recommended to uh, pre-register their intention with, uh, with the customs authorities as to be notified when such um, uh, a request is being submitted by the organization, but also to um, receive the authorization for uh, simplifications and uh, the authorization for uh, relief from uh, import duties. Um, sorry, just to close. Hello, Kosti. Sorry, uh, it was my colleague. Um, 
Um, another capability is to sorry for this. <laughs> I will send him a WhatsApp message. No worries. Yes, thank you. Um, so uh, for uh, for a, um, the main advantage for eligible actors and uh, humanitarian donors uh, to 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 be registered in the system prior to any emergency, I already um, uh, mentioned those uh, the fact they are notified about the um, uh, initiation of emergency, the fact that they can benefit from the simplifications, but also they are notified during the emergency. Uh, not only uh, about the, the um, uh, new items, but also the quantities um, uh, which are requested uh, for the relief items. And uh, also if uh, the, the, the requested uh, quantities have been already uh, imported by uh, other organizations. So um, identified priorities are recorded in ASIREC at an early stage. Uh, like the the the, the um, um, list of relief items, uh, including the the um, um, sorry, I will have to to, to take this. John, can I uh, get back to you? I'm in a call now. Thank you. Yeah, call call me back after this. Sorry for this. Um, so uh, the, the the quantities and the relief items are updated uh, based on uh, on the list and the uh, priorities um, uh, from the ground. Um, this helps uh, customs administration in ident uh, identification of uh, humanitarian consignments and uh, to 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 to. Um, in the distinction from the non-humanitarian shipments, so we have a clear indication that the simplified declaration is uh, submitted in relation with humanitarian shipments, and uh, uh, those uh, consignments are on top of the list with priorities. Uh, we put in place also, as I mentioned in the previous slides, uh, the system of automatic release for non-intervention for all the cases, except the cases where a mandatory physical examination uh, is being um, uh, requested. Um, shipments of eligible operators are registered in advance, um, and we keep uh, record of all the controls, uh, so um, including the feedback. So in case of non-compliance, customs has all the assurances that uh, the, the, the consignments uh, which are being um, 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 uh, cleared during the, the next emergency, the, the, the simplifications are in place for compliant organizations and those uh, organizations which uh, have been uh, found non-compliant during the previous emergencies can uh, use other channels, not the simplifications and the facilitations which are applicable during the emergency via ACIREC. So they will use the standard uh, uh, clearance procedures. Um, Another advantage is that um, uh, national disaster management authorities and customs can prioritize humanitarian consignments based on identified priority needs. So uh, while still uh, we'll keep in place the uh, importation of other relief items than those requested by the government as priority needs, the simplifications and the facilitations will be applicable to uh, those uh, relief items that have been uh, identified by the government as priority needs, while allowing also uh, uh, humanitarian organizations to import other goods, but using the standard channels, not the priority channels. Uh, we enable also uh, post-clearance audits and uh, the assessment of the humanitarian operator's compliance level, uh, as I was mentioning before, based on the feedback of, uh, of the control. So an authorization that was um, um, issued can be temporarily suspended 
for an organization in case of uh, repeated uh, non-compliance. Uh, data from ASIRE can be transferred to, to other national or global online databases for cross-border movement of emergency relief items. Uh, here I want to mention also um, our uh, intention to um, connect ASIREC with the uh, International Humanitarian City database as to um, notify automatically uh, also users of, uh, of uh, that system about the, the emergency and the, the, the list of relief items that have been requested by the government, but also notifying them about the status of the consignments that started to move uh, from, uh, from, uh, uh, from the, the logistic hub towards the affected country, and also when the needs uh, of the country has been fulfilled or if new needs have been uh, uh, submitted. Uh, the system is uh, configurable to allow the implementation in, uh, in any member state, uh, either as an online system or a, a standalone system, uh, when the customs IT system is not, uh, not operational, so we can uh, implement, in fact, a, a dual implementation, one in the country, uh, but also as a, as a, as a backup solution, uh, uh, software as a service in standby in one of the regional uh, support centers, UNCTAD support centers. And if the system, the national system is down, uh, we move automatically the operations to this, um, uh, this uh, um, standby system. A uh, few words about uh, some additional uh, um, uh, capabilities that have been introduced this year, apart from the software as a service. Um, in case of unavailability of national custom system, uh, as the request of one of the member states in the Pacific, uh, we are about to introduce the capability to track and trace humanitarian uh, consignments. So to monitor the movement of humanitarian relief items from the customs clearance office, so from the, the uh, clearance point to the authorized facilities, to, 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 to warehouses, uh, to manage the inventories there, the receipt and storage uh, at authorized facility, but also the movements um, from the national level warehouse to subnational level warehouses, all the way to the final destination and beneficiaries. So this uh, has been requested by uh, one of the, the, the member states as to enable uh, customs, but also uh, humanitarian organizations to monitor the movement of, uh, of such uh, consignments and to uh, make sure that the consignment will uh, um, reach the um, beneficiaries, the victims of, uh, of uh, disaster. Uh, we worked for, uh, for the respective uh, um, country also in developing an interactive country map with localization of main points of interest. So uh, here we speak about the clearance points, the entry points, information about the, the, the uh, points of entry in case of, uh, of uh, um, uh, emergency. Um, contact person, responsibility, role, and working hours. Same for the National Disaster Management Authority and any other um, um, cross-border regulatory authority uh, responsible for the uh, clearance or issuance of any supporting document, uh, such as medical supplies, uh, uh, equipment and devices, telecommunication equipment, and, uh, and others. Uh, and also the respective uh, uh, warehouses. You see now uh, that we are working to do this um, uh, map um, with localization of uh, main points of interest for four countries, for Vanuatu, Nepal, uh, Jamaica, and uh, Madagascar. Um, we will keep this uh, 
at the national level, but also we try to aggregate this information in a global or regional uh, platform, a CIREC platform, as to uh, um, enable this information to be shared uh, faster with all the, the, the relevant uh, actors. Um, we also, in 2022, we worked on developing of an e-learning platform uh, with um, specific learning courses um, designed for various sectors. Uh, as for now, we have three modules, an introduction uh, into ASIREC uh, and the capabilities and the legal framework. Uh, there is a dedicated module for the role of key actors in disaster management and one for the National Disaster Management uh, Authority. Uh, we developed uh, a business continuity and trade recovery plan for ASICUDA user countries as to ensure the timely, smooth and uh, orderly resumption of, uh, of trade. Uh, this is not only uh, specific for, uh, for natural disasters, but uh, in, uh, in general uh, for unavailability of, uh, of the systems uh, or um, um, in case of, uh, of pandemics. Um, a little bit on, uh, on ASIREC on, uh, on media, where you can find additional information. Uh, you can uh, find additional information on, uh, on of course, on uh, uh, ASIREC.org uh, website, but also on uh, UN transport and trade connectivity in the age of pandemics but also on, uh, on Twitter and we have also disseminated flyers which can be also uh, downloaded from directly from, uh, from uh, ASIREC um, website. Uh, this is briefly the introduction into, into this, uh, this topic uh, before opening the floor for, uh, for questions and answers, just to show you the, the platform with the dashboard uh, with the capability, of course, we took into consideration um, the fact that uh, at the national level, uh, multiple emergencies of different types can be um, uh, declared. So it might uh, overlap an, uh, an earthquake with, with, uh, with a flooding in the country. Uh, in the same region or different regions, so the capability to uh, declare emergencies for the National Disaster Management Authorities and also to, um, um, to uh, associate the requested uh, relief items specific for that type of, uh, uh, of emergency. Um, and for each, uh, each, uh, each emergency in part, to notify uh, the, the pre-registered actors, the capability, as you can see, to, to receive automatically notifications about the, uh, the, the uh, emergency uh, when it was declared and also notifications about uh, simplified declarations being submitted and the fact that the consignment arrived. Uh, and uh, the, the eventually when the consignment uh, is being um, uh, released. Um, a very important uh, um, issue here for, uh, for uh, um, simplified declarations, what we put in place is that uh, we can uh, reuse uh, um, information. So you can reuse uh, information from a previous uh, simplified declaration as a template to submit a new declaration. And you can see also the time frame uh, for uh, customs declaration, so which is the estimated time uh, based on real time information, this, which is the estimated time to uh, receive um, uh, the goods, to, to, to release the goods from customs based on information from previous uh, simplified declarations submitted by the same organization or by similar organizations in, uh, um, involved, other organizations involved importing similar uh, categories of uh, relief items. 
So this is in a, in a nutshell, I would say the, the, the work that uh, we've done uh, recently on, uh, on ASIREC. Uh, so while initially was, uh, was um, envisaged to be like an ASICUDA module developed in the same technology, uh, as to be integrated in the National Customs Information System. Uh, now we developed in, in, a, in a full open source uh, technology, so the implementation of such uh, uh, component while being uh, um, uh, integrated within the ASICUDA um, uh, suite. Uh, can be deployed also as an independent software, so can work also independently. And the, the, the deployment, the rollout of such a component doesn't involve any licenses, any fees. So the deployment is done uh, using open source uh, technologies. So thank you for, uh, for listening. I open the floor now for questions, uh, if any. Thank you. Uh, Jehad, thank you. Go ahead. Hi, Kosti. How are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, okay. um, thank you for the presentation. Uh, very much appreciated, as you know. And I'm, I'm already aware of the majority of the things of ICEREC, uh, but uh, I'm very happy to see the, the further development that happens every time we have some, you know, update and meeting is happening. Uh, there is no doubt uh, of the importance of uh, such a system to facilitate the, the, the humanitarian relief cargo movement, especially during emergencies. I have a couple of questions uh, just to be clarified for me and maybe the colleagues who are also attending. Uh, maybe you did, uh, but it would be better if you can clarify a little bit further about your relationship or your coordination with the NDMA uh, COSTI. Uh, this is one thing. And the other thing is, uh, I heard that you mentioned one to uh, um, your recent development uh, with the four areas like Vanuatu, Nepal, Jamaica, Madagascar. So um, if you just, just can repeat again the latest uh, update, uh, if you don't mind, just to make sure that we are on the same page. Uh, the last question, and sorry for, for the uh, long time I'm taking from you, is uh, uh, will be, I just wrote it somewhere here, just one second. Yeah, what do you think will be required from the humanitarian actors or community to support ISEREC and to support ONCTAD on having ISEREC uh, implemented more and more uh, and to, to really, uh, for, for the humanitarian sector to make use of, uh, of this system? Uh, I know uh, that also the last point is that hopefully soon we will also, uh, as uh, based on the MOU we have, that we will link together the ISERIC and the dashboard to have a fully completed system. Uh, we will discuss this uh, further uh, very soon. That's it from my end and sorry for taking too much time. No, thank you. Thank you, Jehad. So, um, in terms of uh, uh, NDMA, um, for NDMAs, um, we uh, defined uh, their role within the context of, uh, of ASIREC. So um, at least, at least as minimum, the NDMA uh, will be involved in the following uh, activities. Uh, pre-emergency uh, to work with customs uh, authorities in uh, and other uh, uh, regulatory agencies in defining the list of uh, priority relief items for different types of emergencies based on previous experience. This might be easier for disaster prone countries, which based uh, which they have this kind of information from previous emergencies so they can work out with customs, not only identifying, we've seen in a lot of countries to not name them, that some of the countries, they identify the list of uh, priority needs in case of a particular emergency. However, they don't provide the uh, associated tariff uh, uh, codes, which are very important, not only for automatic verification that uh, um, this, uh, this uh, consignment, uh, in fact, brings uh, goods requested by the government and not other goods, 
but it's very important also in supporting uh, um, uh, declarants in submitting the, the declaration. So instead of wasting time with uh, doing the, the uh, classification, the tariff classification, once you define them in the system, when you create the simplified declaration, you can select from a drop down list exactly the uh, commodity codes which are requested by the, the government without bothering with tariff classification. Um, this is one. Uh, we also uh, um, help uh, national disaster management authorities in um, um, using the system to uh, declare the emergency, so to, to, to uh, initiate it, to put the, the estimated time and eventually, if needed, to, to extend that time to uh, update the list of uh, uh, relief items if needed or where needed or the quantities, informing the organizations that maybe they received uh, enough quantities of whatever uh, generators uh, and to ask for, uh, for additional uh, items. And we also um, um, uh, inform them about the possibility of using a CIREC to have an, uh, during the emergency as to have an overview picture of the quantities already arrived uh, of relief items or uh, quantities, I would say, committed uh, uh, quantities of relief items en route to the uh, destina destination to the, to the, to the affected uh, country. Um, and also the National Disaster Management Authority to record the termination of the, of the emergency so um, to record and to notify automatically the organization involved and why not to learn from uh, from previous emergencies so to see exactly which were the quantities uh, uh, previously requested uh, during the same type of emergency having also the history of uh, um, um, previous importations bottlenecks eventually and to 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 be able to to implement corrective measures uh, in the during the next uh, emergency uh, in terms of uh, status on uh, on other countries, so I believe the most advanced uh, it's uh, it's Vanuatu right now. Uh, Vanuatu, um, um, there uh, they requested, uh, as I was mentioning before, to implement not uh, only the standard version uh, but also the capability to track and trace the the, the consignments post release. So up to the point when the um, um, relief items reach the final destination. So what they wanted, in fact, to ensure is that uh, relief items will not be diverted on the black market and also to, to make sure and to enable, to build this trust uh, with, with customs authorities. So to enable them to do the post clearance uh, control without the need to, to, to bother uh, too much with uh, going and uh, checking all the, the, the uh, paperwork at the premises of uh, organizations uh, involved in, uh, in this. Um, in terms of, uh, of um, uh, what can be done more to support the implementation of, uh, of uh, ACIREX. So, we tried from, um, I would say, core members of the, the impact working group uh, um, uh, to, 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 to use each and every opportunity. And this is one of those opportunities in which uh, we, we have to, to, to present the capabilities of, uh, of ACIREC. However, uh, at the national level, maybe we need a little bit more uh, because ASIREC is a priority during an emergency. So if you would ask uh, uh, an affected uh, uh, member state if they need ASIREC while uh, they are uh, um, um, during an emergency, they will say yes and they will look for, uh, for funds. But once the, the emergency is terminated, uh, it looks that it's not anymore a, a priority. So. Um, maybe we need a little bit of help with uh, the work uh, in mainly in uh, countries, um, um, disaster prone countries, 
to 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 uh, discuss with uh, with customs authorities there and national disaster management authorities and also with uh, with potential donors and to see exactly which type of solution would be most suitable is it uh, i don't know just for the sake of uh, discussion uh, is it more appropriate uh, a standby solution in the i don't know in uh, in the pacific for all the the countries in the region or for the um, caribbeans uh, as a region or each and every country would uh, like to have uh, his own uh, uh, implementation and also depending on the on the use of asirec uh, we have to 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 see uh, is it to be used mainly for uh, during natural disasters or it's about to be used also for um, countries affected by conflicts and to to see and the Asikuda it's in fact uh, the customs information system used in uh, in uh, uh, some of those countries so Asikuda is used in Afghanistan in Iraq in Yemen in Syria so to see exactly how we tailor and how we we customize the the uh, the, the system as IREC to fulfill the needs of both customs administrations or government agencies in the affected country, but also uh, humanitarian uh, organizations. Um, thank you, Jahad. Thank you so much, Kostya. Thank you. Uh, Hans Peter. Yes, Klantsantin, thanks a lot. Um, I have a brief question. I, I know that more than 100 countries signed off for ASIC Huda. Um, can you tell, maybe I missed that point, how many, um, SEREC is not automatically um, part of the ASIC Huda suite, right? So yeah. you, can you tell how many countries have registered for SEREC? I mean, you have to register as a country because in order to use it, you need to ask for international support right so that means that there is some preparation work for the country in there as well um so i'm, I'm asking because um, i was interested in that um, registration in advance the ups foundation is supporting a lot of relief consignments even though we are usually not the importer of records right so that means that the importer needs to be usually the humanitarian organization at the spot and usually you are not preparing for a disaster in this is the case in disaster prone countries but you won't register in 60 or 70 countries for azirek right that's that's the that's the issue here thanks uh, thank you so uh, i believe this was the the, the main challenge uh, uh, for uh, for us right now because right now it's just vanuatu who who um, who is really implementing uh, um, a lot of countries uh, express their interest in uh, in this we've uh, we've been with with virginia i recall the first country in which we we went and we made a simulation exercise and we presented uh, um, uh, asirec was in uh, in nepal uh, they had the, the the will to 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 deploy the the component however um there were no funds uh, made available uh, and funds why uh, the, the the last thing that we want to do uh, is to um, to leave uh, the, the the component uh, at the discretion of um, of um, I don't know of uh, some officials to customize it uh, as they they think so what what we want to achieve with ASIREC is not only to deploy a, a piece of IT software, but just to, but also to change the the the, the guidelines, the rules, the regulations uh, in the in the country, as to facilitate the proper use of the components. So, to for example, to define the list of uh, emergency uh, relief items in advance and their HS code, to draft the the SOPs on the on how. Uh, customs will clear the goods, how customs and other border agencies will uh, share information, how we will collaborate in order to uh, um, release the, the, the goods upon uh, arrival. Most of the countries, in fact, they don't have the legislation to allow pre-arrival processing. Um, 
So we want to build capacities, we want to, to change the legislation and to have a proper implementation of the system, because otherwise uh, you, you, you can use the, the, the standard ASICUDA, ASICUDA uh, system. You don't have to use uh, such, a, such a system. So right now it's, uh, it's just uh, Vanuatu who is really implementing it. Uh, we have a couple of uh, countries like I was uh, uh, mentioning before, the other three, which um, they are quite, I would say, close to, 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 to sign an agreement for implementation. And like you said, the idea would be uh, this one, uh, apart from uh, deploying a CIREC in a particular country, to have a kind of central database or regional database in which uh, all actors, including um, uh, carriers, to uh, have the possibility to receive those notifications and uh, about an emergency being declared to find out exactly information about the points of entry, the, 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 the procedure being applicable, and eventually to submit the, the, the information that is required uh, before the, the arrival. Um, Unfortunately, we didn't reach the, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, stage uh, to, to have multiple countries. We wanted to, uh, to and we want, in fact, to deploy the, the system as a proof of concept on different continents uh, and to deploy it in different types of uh, use cases. So in countries affected by conflicts, in, uh, in, uh, in countries, uh, disaster prone countries, just to show that uh, it can work, it can work with uh, customization or adaptations uh, in, uh, in any, um, on any country, in any country and in, uh, in different contexts. understand Constantine thanks a lot for your for your answers and uh, something else to 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 let you know uh what we want also to achieve a kind of harmonization of information to be exchanged with Asikuda user countries so uh while uh, we have also in the revised Kyoto convention the recommendation to use simplified declaration we want to harmonize the data set among uh, Sikuda user countries, the data set for simplified declarations. So to make the life of organizations involved in the, in the cross-border movement easier. So you know exactly which data set and with small variations to be able to submit uh, that information in advance to any of the affected countries uh without uh, having different data sets and different uh, requirements thank you uh florin yes uh, thank you constantin for this uh, presentation it's good to see the project growing since 2016. um i'm just gonna uh, read the question i've put in the chat which is in fact two questions um, on the Stockholm project, we start to investigate the idea of having uh, more and more relationship with the impact project, also working on some HS codes. And you mentioned uh, in your presentation that you were also having a plan to do some kind of mapping of points of interest in Vanuatu, Madagascar, etc. So just my question were to clarify what were these points of interest if they're, if they're mostly facilities, because that's what we do with Stockholm. So how could we potentially uh, coordinate to avoid duplicating those efforts. And the, the other question is, what is the link or how do you work with the impact projects, um, either in you know the, the formal link between Azirec and impact, but also uh, during, you know, for Stockholm, for instance, we liaise, we rely a lot on the stock, on the logistic cluster to help us liaise with the NDMA, because obviously we are not present in every country. Um, and how do you, organize this liaison with the NDMA yourself and again in that in that instance do you have support from impact or how does it work thank you uh, thank you so in terms of points of interest um, what we want to achieve here is to have um, not only to collect that information because you 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 can collect that uh, that type of information at a certain point in time but to have an automatic process 
in which would allow us to 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 receive the most recent updated information so we don't want to have a database of static information and during an emergency somebody just to to let's say to 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 declare the emergency but to forget to update a certain uh, on on this website uh, the information so what we want is to ensure the synchronization between the information in the sicuda systems whatever information is there and the information that we have this in main points of interest uh, and also to um, uh, enable um, um, I would say organizations and locations which are uh, on the on the point of interest map uh, to declare, um, for example, the, the the best example is working hours, which are the regular working hours. However, outside the the standard environment, in case of emergency, uh, that particular office will not work. I'd say, let's say, from eight to eight or from okay. eight o'clock but it will work 24 7. Okay. so to enable automatically and to capture this information in the in the system ideally ideally uh, we should be able at a certain point in time to synchronize this type of information like you rightfully said also with other uh, um, other uh, uh, databases as to make sure that uh, uh, regardless where uh, humanitarian actor is looking at they will find exactly the same information. So you want to, to use the, the ASICUDA customs information system or ASIREC, you will have the same information about working hours, uh, clearance time and everything as you have it in ASIREC, as you have it also in other uh, databases. But maybe here we can uh, further discuss and we can see how this kind of information can be uh, exchanged between different databases. And I'm sure that it will be extremely, extremely helpful because we've seen now in the context of COVID, this type of information being collected by various organizations. And I'm not sure if there is uh, any, any mechanism in place uh, which would allow uh, those organizations to, uh, to, to, to display or to, to make uh, um, um, to make aware their uh, their subscribers that that information it's up to date and is the same as in uh, in other uh, uh, websites or uh, portals. Definitely, okay. there we have to to work. In terms of impact, uh, we I would say we are one of the founders of uh, of uh, impact. Uh, we've had together with uh, with. Uh, OCHA back then with Virginie and WCO, the very first uh, um, trainings um, uh, being delivered uh, as, uh, as a new working group. Um, we provide our experience and our expertise in, uh, in, uh, in customs mainly from the operational viewpoint and from the viewpoint that we have um, boots on the ground in most of the, the, the Asikuda user countries, or uh, if not, we have the contact points in, uh, in the country. So we can contact uh, the National Disaster Management Authority uh, directly or via customs administrations within that, uh, that country. Or of course, in countries uh, in which we don't have uh, uh, contact points, uh, uh, we used to 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 use uh, uh, impact working group mainly Virginie. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Virginie is uh, is uh, online, so we used uh, her support to to uh, to to reach out to 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 get more information from uh, from that country. Uh, so we try to to on one point to be a source of information from the countries in which we, we, we have access to more information or up-to-date information, but on the other hand, to be beneficiary of the information from other uh, uh, countries where we, we, uh, we don't have a physical uh, presence there.
Okay, and maybe a follow-up point on that. Sorry uh, to take too long on that, but uh, we, we are having discussion with uh, Impact and with actually the International Metal City uh, with uh, Jihad, connecting our respective pro projects, and that might be around the HS code and the work that they do at regional level and the one we do at national level. And so maybe this question of looking how we can, you know, share data, avoid duplication, uh, we could also discuss that during the HNPW. I guess you will probably be there. Um, so if we, if we are, if, I mean, we will definitely be there. So we, maybe that's a, for a discussion we can follow up um, on the side. Yes, and uh, maybe it would be time because we are preparing now uh, the, the, the events that we can participate in uh, during uh, HNPW. Maybe we can have also uh, a session in which all of us, all three of us, we can uh, present the like a proof of concept, the benefits and the, 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 the way how we see that um, uh, those systems can be connected, how the systems and in which particular cases uh, information can be shared, what type of information, which would be the benefit of sharing that information. We had uh, with, with Jihad, I would say, uh, a big dream to, to, to connect ASIREC with uh, IHC um, data bank, uh, as I was mentioning before, to, um, to exchange in an automatic way um, that information and why not to, to uh, ensure trust. Ensure trust uh, uh, on the customs administration side that look, uh, the, the, the relief items are uh, coming from a trusted source, are being provided by an um, uh, eligible and reliable actor, a trusted uh, operator, uh, and uh, there is no question about uh, uh, um, relief items uh, being either uh, expired. So I believe the, this is the, 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 the best use case. Now, why would you uh, uh, stop uh, uh, consignment of uh, uh, food or um, uh, medicines? Is to check the expiry date, one of the, the standard checks by, by customs administrations. Now, if you trust the, the, the source and you know that somebody else in the country of departure, in the country of origin, has already performed those uh, kind of checks and you trust that entity so you can configure a CIREC on the other uh, direction as to release automatically this, uh, those consignments without the need to perform a manual check over the box and doing this. So uh, we identify with Jihad a lot of benefits of interconnecting the system. Mm -hmm. And now that we made uh, further steps uh, last month in, uh, in our collaboration, I'm really looking forward to, to have a proof of concept as soon as, uh, as possible. And why not? Let's, let's try to, to identify the needs in, uh, between the three systems. Yep, absolutely. That's along the same line of the discussion we have been already. So yeah, let's uh, let's follow up on that discussion. I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Flora, for bringing this up. We are sure uh, why Virginia is taking the lead and she's supporting us and putting together three of us. Hopefully, maybe next week uh, we'll uh, contact you, Costi, to see uh, to facilitate what uh, Flora just mentioned to see how we can have one session where we can have the three systems together. Uh, working and um, I'm sure it will be um, a very practical uh, adding value uh, session for all of us. Thank you. I think there's one other question in the chat box from Manuel Heinemann. Uh, on how to per register as an organization, what about the costs and whether Azurek is free of costs? Uh, so um, it's, it's free in terms of licensing fees, but of course the implementation uh, is, uh, we, we, we have to have the funding of um, delivering the training on the use, customization, and maintenance of the system by the, the authority <coughs> in the country. Uh, and uh, there, there, are not, uh, there are no uh, licensing fees. Uh, so the, the, the software is open source, is developed by United Nations, and is delivered free of charge. However, 
the the implementation costs uh, have to be there for the reasons that I was uh, mentioning uh, before. So the fact that we have to uh, train them on how to use, how to activate, how to maintain the system to make sure that in case of emergency, uh, the, the, the system can be uh, used uh, immediately and to not face any, any problem. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't uh, uh, remember the, the second question. Whether when activated, it's free of costs, I believe. Uh, yes, so the, the organization, so the self-registration of organizations, it's, uh, it's free of charge. It's, uh, it's not a, a fee to, to, to register organizations. It's, uh, it's the same process that you would do. Uh, and by the way, um, this is a, um, a facility to expedite the process uh, and to not uh, register the organization during the emergency. However, uh, organizations can be uh, can uh, can be registered also during the, the the emergency. It's not mandatory to do it in advance, but we highly advise organizations to be registered in advance to make sure that they can benefit from all the simplifications and facilitations uh, from day one or minute one when the emergency is, uh, is declared, but also uh, to benefit from these automatic notifications in case of uh, uh, emergency. So to be notified that the emergency has been declared and which are the, the, the um, uh, relief items being requested by the, by the government. Then there was another question, uh, but the participant has left the meeting in the meantime uh, on um, whether um, the track and trace uh, capabilities have already been implemented or whether you're still working on those. Uh, they, uh, the, the capabilities uh, have been developed in the context of the, the deployment of ASIREC in Vanuatu. Uh, and uh, they will be, of course, uh, enabled in case of uh, an emergency being declared in, uh, in, uh, in Vanuatu. So development, it's, uh, it's completed. Uh, the, the, we are about to deliver the, the, the training on the use and of the system. And uh, after that, if an emergency will be declared uh, there, uh, we'll be able to track and trace the, the, the consignment. I think no other questions on the chat box. So if there are no, no other questions, thank you very much for, uh, for joining this session. It took a little bit longer than, uh, than planned, the, the one hour, but maybe this is good news. Um, thank you for your questions and uh, really looking forward to uh, working with you um, on, the, on, the, on the implementation of, uh, of uh, ASIREC or within the context of the um, uh, impact working group. Thank you.